Okay, just could, could you please highlight some of the, uh, uh, basically what would be the benefits of, uh, and if any, the downfalls of a meaningful autonomous region or, or a meaningfully autonomous Tibet? What would the benefits be for Tibet, for China, and for the rest of the world that you can foresee? This? Actually, when we talk of uh, autonomy, we strictly refer to the Gandhi's idea of Swaraj. And Swaraj is uh, quite different from independence. Independence is uh, referring to a strictly a political affair. While talking about autonomy, it more refers to a cultural, uh, social, economy, education, and particularly uh, spiritual affairs. So therefore, a meaningful autonomy for Tibet would benefit the uh, Chinese people because the Chinese people then can have a, a very close relationship with the Tibetan uh, people and by which there would be a immensely benefit for spiritual affairs and moral affairs. And the Tibetan people will uh, in return benefit from the PRC, uh, economic, uh, modern development, and perhaps for certain extent even defense. So therefore, the meaningful autonomy is beneficial to uh, both the people of Tibet and people of China, and through which uh, uh, atmosphere of uh, peace and stability can be uh, established in the uh, uh, Asian region and uh, which will uh, definitely benefit the uh, entire world and the entire humanity. Um, in light of the present global economic crisis, uh, in light of the present global economic crisis, the need for nations to cooperate is very urgent. How would you suggest that uh, the nations cooperate? Nations cooperation is uh, absolutely necessary, not only the time of the economic crisis of today, but the economic uh, stability of the uh, world, the cooperation is uh, absolutely important. But what is cooperation? That needs to be understood. Cooperation means free from competition. Unless you give up competition, there cannot be any meaningful cooperation. So to give up uh, the uh, co uh, competition, you need uh, entire reorientation of the economic system. Otherwise, uh, the competition, uh, the cooperation may not be uh, possible. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, we have a uh, an economic system we've developed in South Africa called South African New Economics, the letters of which SANE systems we call them, and uh, our, the one that we're developing is called the Community Exchange System, where uh, money's in infinite supply, and anyone like a state can create money where they need to make a transaction. So before where two people couldn't, uh, let's say you have a broken house, someone across the street who's a builder, before if there was no money the house couldn't be fixed. Now with this system you both have an account on the internet and uh, the person who owns the house says okay please fix it, he says 5,000, uh, so okay he takes your, his account number, he debits him minus 5,000 and uh, the person who's the builder now plus 5,000 and uh, then they have made the exchange. And then he never has to see each other again they can, uh, he can pay off his debt by, in his house he gives uh, Tibetan lessons, 100, 100 uh, units an hour, and after, uh, after you know, f f what would it be, 50 hours of Tibetan lessons, then he's paid off his debt of getting his house fixed. There's no need for a state, there's no in inflation, and um, it, uh, uh, it allows these transactions to happen. And then, what's great, no co competition, because it's an infinite supply. You can now, cooperation and trust other, other moralities that it is valuable. And so I would love to set one up in Dharamsala, that's where we're off to next. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Very good idea. Okay. It effectively, it's just an online trading system, non-competitive, mm -hmm. and it has no interest built right. into it. Right. Yeah. And it supports local community mm -hmm. uh, trading, and everyone has to offer something. Mm -hmm. 
And the more people on it, the more value. Mm -hmm. In Cape Town, as Charlie was saying, there's already thousands of people using the system. Right. And we would love to we'd love to introduce to Dharamsala and Baikalpur while we're here on our trip still now to just explore what's possible. Oh yes, it's a very good idea. Very good idea. Uh, okay, um, Okay, if, if we could organize all nations into a cooperative structure, uh, what goal should we be working towards? <laughs> the goal should be everyone should be satisfied their real needs. And uh, each individual should know what is his or her real needs and uh, stop wastage of community or resources more than one's own need and uh, the, a need-based economy to develop a need-based uh, need economy not in a, a kind of uh, consumerism uh, a need-based economy, not a greed-based economy, that should be goal of the uh, world cooperation. Only then you will have a sustainable economy. Otherwise, there's no way to, uh, unless your consumption becomes a sustainable, a sustainable economy can never be built up. All the resources are uh, uh, finite, and if you, you, your usage is uh, infinite, then there will be no um, stability. So therefore, people should know the needs and uh, then uh, the economic should be based on the real needs. That is absolutely important. How might a system of world peace, world peace. in which the supremacy of humanity over uh, matter and ideology be maintained? I don't know. Uh, Equality is the basis of uh, peace and uh, anyone uh, maintains uh, some kind of uh, supremacy then uh, the real peace uh, appears to be difficult. Justice, equality are the basis of uh, real peace for which uh, no one should have any supremacy over anyone. Okay. Um. Okay, my question is now relating to. Uh, do you think? Okay, um, is now going to relate to universal responsibility, and the idea of uh, of the Tibetan the Tibetan government is trying to liberate the Tibetan people into uh, into meaningful autonomy, and with the greatest respect for the nobility of the cause and the necessity of it, and the imperativeness of that for all humanities humanity. Um, is it not uh, only a, a, national, uh, a national government rather than a universal government, which so it's only nationally responsible rather than universally responsible? Uh, we do not uh, believe uh, in the so-called nationalism. Uh, we also do not believe the necessity of uh, uh, national uh, government or national nation state theory. Nation state theory divides uh, the humanity into nations and uh, into states. All humanity are equal. All humanity are brothers and sisters with each other. But uh, we are working for a certain degree of autonomy for the uh, Tibetan people with sense of universal responsibility. The Tibetan people has a, a uni universal obligation. Our universal obligation is to preserve, promote and disseminate the unique uh, spiritual and cultural heritage of Tibet, which is very much relevant and beneficial to entire humanity. This is our universal responsibility. Each one of the Tibetan people has a universal responsibility to share our spiritual heritage to everyone, with everyone. 
uh, of the humanity. And uh, in order to perform that universal responsibility, we need certain degree of freedom, certain degree of autonomy, within which we are able to uh, function ourselves according to uh, the need and according to the uh, requirement of the uh, spirituality and its uh, functioning and uh, to perform the responsibility and for which we are seeking the um, uh, uh, meaningful autonomy. And uh, if meaningful autonomy is uh, granted to the Tibetan people, the Tibetan people will be able to uh, perform its universal responsibility. So the autonomy itself is uh, not an um, end, it is a mean. The end is uh, the proper performance of our universal responsibility and uh, enable to do that we need a certain degree of autonomy. So therefore it is a performance of a universal responsibility. Um, okay. If, um, uh, do you feel that the Tibetan government structure and the, I ideological, the ideological structure of uh, spiritual and tempor temporal rule united would be a good model for an international system of government whose uh, sovereignty, as it were, its autonomy was self-granted um, and it's, as its universal um, responsibility, it grants it unto itself. It isn't granted it by the Chinese or anyone else and its home would be the entire planet. Do you feel that would be a, a uh, do you feel that would be a, a useful system or at this time? Useful system, the combination of... Uh, uh, the combination of so, to set up a, a global uh, government um, with the Tibetan government and exile structure and you are sovereign... Yeah, but not, not of everyone, but of anyone who, who chooses. Right. Who chooses. I think so. A system which is a void of uh, morality and spirituality that will not work uh, beneficial in long term for its people. Any system which is based on truth and the morality, only then that system can deliver the justice. Therefore, the separation of uh, state and the church is a good but a separation of state and morality, uh, it is a disaster. So therefore, a combination of uh, temporal with the spirituality uh, uh, is, uh, I think, uh, the real uh, uh, basis of uh, happiness for everyone. Okay, so uh, I think our time is up. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is uh, that is pretty much everything. I just like to say thank you very, very much. Yeah, and my greetings to all of you. Yeah, thank the humanity shall have to uh, reduce its desire, and uh, without uh, reduce the desire, you cannot uh, reduce the competition, and uh, without. Uh, Reducing the competition, you cannot build up in a cooperation. And uh, without cooperation, you can never uh, uh, eliminate the barriers as nations or as states or as uh, countries or so on and so forth. So, therefore, uh, people should understand themselves. The self-realization is the, I think, first step to know what is one's need and what is one's desire. The greed and desire, the removal of greed and desire is the uh, uh, essential uh, way to, uh, to break down the boundaries between the humanity. And this is possible, but nobody has tried it. <laughs> Professor Samlang Rinpoche is esteemed, renowned throughout the world, in Tibet, obviously, in India, absolutely, as one of the finest minds, and as the democratically elected representative of 
um, the Tibetan people, representing over six million people, um, being in a position, as we are at South African Friends of Tibet, to come and join the International Tibet Support Group here this weekend on special request from the Tibetan government in exile, headed by uh, Professor Sam Dongun Pache and His Holiness the Dalai Lama, to come and give input, suggestions, advice on how uh, the Tibetan government in exile might be able to take uh, the movement forward practically is also um, it's an amazing opportunity to give constructive input at a critical time in Tibet's history. So it feels great, it feels amazing, uh, very inspiring. Um, he is obviously a man of, of his people um, and, and, and they couldn't do better at this time in their history. And we're going up to Dharamsala, we're going into the heart of the Tibetan um, community in India on uh, tomorrow. Um, we should, we'll be there on Tuesday morning. And um, the idea to go and implement local non-competitive economic trading systems there is also, I think, a great um, blessing of something we already see happening. And I know you're developing in, in Cape Town um, and taking it to the next level as well. So to be able to go and actually share those fruits with, with these kind, beautiful people, so much wisdom for bringing peace onto this planet, uh, it feels great. How yeah. about you? <laughs> feel good, feel good. Hey, let's try it, let's try let's it. Let's try it. Let's try it. <laughs> yes, we can. Let me ask you. Okay, if you like. Of course. Here comes people. Is it rolling? Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Ah. Hello, everybody. Charlie. Hello, my name is Ch Charlie. <laughs> I'm Charlie, and I'm normally behind the camera, but I had the, the great pleasure of speaking to Sangdom Rinpoche, uh, Sangdom Rinpoche, yeah. and he's the sharpest mind, the sharpest, most beautiful mind, very, very kindly condescending to deal with the world of national politics to help us through it at this time, and uh, so gracefully and just gently and patiently, uh, he's very, 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 very lovely. Um, I think we must take uh, leaves from his very, very full and generous book and try it, really try it. Uh, a, a unified effort to come together and cooperate and so I've dedicated my life to it and I hope we can cooperate or be conscious of the fact that we are already cooperating on an interconnected level already yes very much love bye and <laughs> what do you think about the suggestion put forward last night and the confirmation and encouragement right now that South African Friends of Tibet bring this International Tibet Support Group and Sam Dong Rinpoche back to South Africa or f for him back but for the Tibet Support Group International for the first time ever to South Africa next year. I think it can be only good for the cultivation of our consciousness of compassion and the beauty of everything right now. Maybe we could convince some monks to stay with us and teach the local guys some Tibetan, Tibetan medicines, to, uh, Tibetan meditations, teach us compassion and uh, so laughter yoga. And, uh, it, will, it will certainly open many, many doors. It will. Thank you, God. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, everything. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs>